the business even faster and we have a clearer mindset on, on, on actually how to build it more efficiently. Okay, so, but tonight is uh, actually, I want to extract some of the very good points from one of the book that I read uh, this year. So this book is called uh, Quantum Success. Okay, so in this book itself got many chapters. Okay, so every chapter you will have different steps of uh, for things uh, to achieve success in our life and also in, in our business, right? So uh, I picked one of the chapter because this chapter is short and the point is so important also. Okay, so it's actually four steps to success for this particular chapter. So what are these four steps? I actually have, I have summarized it to you guys uh, for, for sharing purpose. So you can actually see in a subsequent slide. So first step is actually, it says that the, uh, in these four steps to achieve success, right? The first step is actually commit to our goal. So um, this is not about, uh, this is not only for business, but uh, the book title itself has suggested the su quantum success for wealth and health. So this is like overall in our life, right? Whatever you want to achieve, okay? We have to commit to our goal, all right? So in this part, right, what he actually mentioned that I feel is uh, very interesting to share with you guys is that firstly, he says that why do we commit to a goal? Ever, ever we ask ourselves that question, Today, if you set a goal, right, and then do you ask yourself why you should commit to this goal, okay? So if let's say you can't answer yourself why should you commit to this goal, right, then I think we have this thing that the book point, the book point out, which is we don't, have a, we don't really have a vivid goal. And the process of setting this goal is basically is not done by ourselves. It's like you, you, you copy from someone or someone tell you to do so, then, then you do so, okay? So it's always important to actually uh, have that self-talk, talk to ourselves whether this is something that really we want to achieve and we know the why very clear, why we want to achieve this, then only we will have that very vivid image, okay? When it's achieved, how the thing will happen and how that visual will actually happen. And when that visual come into your mind very vividly, right? The book says that it actually should also involve emotion. So if there's no emotion, right? Today, um, I, I would say like 100%, we will not commit to this goal. One, okay. Like for example, you said something, okay. You say, I want to like lose weight, for example, I want to lose weight. So if you want to lose weight, right? You set this goal, but do you have that very clear, uh, visual already when you achieve it when people start to compliment you of your transformation your change all that do you already imagining and you can feel the emotion inside yourself already if you can then uh, i'm quite sure you will stick to this goal for sure doesn't matter today your workout body is uh, with you or not doesn't matter today you your mood is good or not but just by looking into the mirror it already remind you of your this vivid goal and with the emotion together you want to make it happen you want to prove it to people right so if you have this right that is the first step that we we, we should have a, our own uh, goal a, a goal that really uh, like original one uh, from yourself uh, okay and then second the book also mentioned that um, to commit to this goal, right? We have to also be uh, be realistic, like We have to aware that it actually takes time, okay? It takes efforts, and then we have to be focused and uh, know how to do priority, uh, okay? So with this uh, clear and also a very realistic uh, uh, expectation to ourselves, right? You will not stop halfway because you already give a right expectation, and the expectation is is realistic. So if let's say, if we look back now into the same business, uh, into this business, right? We will also set goal. So when we set goal, right? How do you actually make it happen and make it become uh, realistic, right? It's depending on how close you are. Actually, you keep planning with your, your upline, your active upline, okay? Keep talking to your mentor, keep talking to your, your, your people who brought you into the business, right? So that will actually improve our commitment to whatever that we want to achieve. Lah. Okay, so number three, consciously making it into the priority. Okay, so this, no, nobody can help us, right? It's only we ourselves. That's why it has to be right at the first place. When the point one, you do it right, right? 
this point three automatic is like you will consciously remind yourself, I have to put this as priority. I have to put this as priority. You'll keep telling yourself. Right? So it's like whenever how busy you are, if your mission is to lose weight or to actually uh, to have weight management, uh, okay, we, we, because of body key, we seldom use the lose weight terms uh, because to us, it's not about losing that weight. It's more on like uh, having the right composition of uh, body. So that should be the right correct, right correction. Uh, but I'm just using the layman term, for example, if someone wants to just lose weight or what. So we have to like consciously uh, making it a priority. If it's not in your priority, right, you will tell yourself, okay, today too tired with work already. I skip my exercise. I skip my fitness. Or if, if today is uh, too tired to cook myself already, I just order something to, uh, to, to fulfill my craving. So when only you will achieve your this loose weight journey, right? So uh, also some example, right? For example, if you want to own our own business, right? then we have to like consciously make it the priority also. Just like today, uh, Mway is a free enterprise. Okay, your upline is not your boss. Okay, your mentor cannot instruct you to do anything also. So own it. I mean, if you really own it, right, you will actually automatic have the discipline to put it as the priority. And then of course, on uh, in your schedule, lah, okay, not on the top, but it's after family or religious or that, then only comes to this thing that which you set as a goal okay and or, or some other example for example if you want to become a millionaire but if you want to be, become a millionaire but you don't think of way to actually find other source of income to do a proper investment all that and how okay if you didn't consciously make it a priority right whatever that you set right is like uh set for fun only okay it will not happen okay as per this book so <clears throat> because this book uh, i just uh, detour a bit uh, this book basically why the title is quantum success uh, because quantum we all know is a very physical very scientific thing right so as per this author right he's, he he deeply believe uh, success is also something very scientific it's already like a quantum thing okay that means if you do this right 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 automatic you will definitely achieve the success one but how come a lot of people is not achieving it's because they don't follow the formula they don't they they don't trust the formula so <clears throat> actually there's already a formula to actually achieve this just that if we honestly ask ourselves uh, are we doing all this are we fulfilling all this if the, any of it is no right then we cannot blame that it's uh it's uh our our fault right so second step that is tell about this uh, achieving success is like set up a step-by-step -step plan. So this, I think, is a very practical and very good uh, idea actually illustrated by the book because a lot of time when we set goal, right, then we start to have that fear because when we have that fear to actually execute or to achieve whatever we set as a goal, right, then you will eventually stop us also. So second part is actually learn how to set up a step-by-step -step plan. Mm. So success can only happen in a small repeated step, never a giant big step as per this book mentioned. So if you think about it, uh, it's true also, you know, because if we look at the real world, uh, whoever is very successful, for example, in the past, we have Steve Jobs, we have Bill Gates, and then now we have Elon Musk, all that. Okay, all these very significant people, uh, they have a history of all these small steps, okay, that they took, that give them this success of today. So it's never a one big giant step that bring them to whoever they are today. Same goes to us. If let's say today we know very well our target, our direction, what we want to achieve, then we have to expect, we have to also have that small step. If you don't have that small step, uh, don't expect anything will happen, right? So once we know that this is a fact, this is also a science, then just a map, uh, the book also mentioned just a map is seldom helpful if you don't know your destination, okay? So if you think about it, it's very true, right? Like today it gives you a map, but you don't know where to go to. That map, that map itself is like serve no purpose, okay? You will never be able to move in the direction of success if there's no clear picture of the desired goal. So again, it really back to the step one. If we step one do right, right? then only the map will matter to you. Otherwise, it will tell you how, uh, how to break it down to a step. Also, doesn't make sense to you, right? If let's say you don't know where you are heading and that is really what you want to head to. 
okay and then write it down okay so uh, the book also uh, mentioned on something that i already uh, truly believe all this far i always write down whatever i want to achieve i always write down whatever i plan to execute so make it a habit to write it down because like I shared in my previous sharing, I always don't trust our brain. Okay, our brain has, uh, our brain is very powerful, but it is our our. So far, humans still don't know how to actually operate it at the optimum state. So as long as we still don't know how to optimum our brain function, right? We still need to rely on tools and write it down. Okay, and the purpose of writing down is also to give us a clearer impression what we actually plan and what are the steps that we are taking next and next, okay? So third step is actually take action every day, okay? So this is a very good reminder from the book because uh, first point, if you are not set to do the labor, you are not willing to see the success. So like I said, everything happened for a reason because it's like quantum, right? So uh, there must be something happening that caused another things to happen. So if we are status quo or we didn't do anything, we cannot expect something to happen suddenly, lah, right? So <clears throat> have to take that action. And then second, if you allow all the little tasks of life to become your priority, right? You will never set aside enough time to consistently work on what really matters. So we often get this, lah, especially when we go, when we talk to... <laughs> As for myself, I encountered a lot of response from friends who actually says that they are busy, okay, they don't have time to look at another business or a side business or whatsoever. Doesn't matter. Okay, there's no right or wrong. But I think the point here is uh is 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 makes sense, okay, for us to think to think deeply ourselves. Lah. Because uh it says that if let's say we always day to day, uh, we're busy with all these little tasks, uh, we will never there's no ending one. But it's about prioritization again. If you know how to actually fill in the big rock first, right? And then the sand come in after, right? Then actually you can fill up more efficiently your timetable, right? Number three, take some time in the morning or night to list out our action for that day or that next day. This is so important because previously whenever I listen to leaders in our business that share how they actually have that self uh planning time, they take a moment during night or in very in early in the morning to do that planning, right? I didn't really do it previously. But the moment I start to practice this, uh, I really feel it helps a lot. At least you already have a clear picture uh, tomorrow, what will happen, what you will execute, what we will do, right? So this is very important to have a direction uh, and to, to actually encourage ourselves to take the action. Uh, because if you didn't plan it, then likely tomorrow you'll tell yourself tomorrow and another tomorrow you also tell yourself another tomorrow, right? So uh, it's also worth sharing uh, this concept of uh, law of motion. So imagine this ball, right? Sitting there, um, nothing will happen. Okay, you will remain like that almost quite certain uh, forever, okay? Unless there's a net force act on it, right? So this net force is what we learn as uh, like momentum. Uh, okay, so if let's say we have a force, the ball will start to have a momentum and then you will have motion and then that motion will actually keep it going. And if let's say there's no uh, resistant force, the resistant force should be coming from the grass or that, right? The, the grass and the floor that is rolling on. If let's say there's no resistant force, uh, it can actually roll forever one, you know. It's like you kick now, uh, it can roll one round and then another round throughout the earth okay, if there's no resistant force. But in life, there's definitely a resistant force, right? So if you know this science and this concept, right, you will know if you want to achieve success, you will definitely need to put in more force than the resistant force. Otherwise, in the end, you will like the ball also, right? you will stop right? because you only kick once. So if you know the, the, the science of it, which I, I, I really love this book is because it share in a very scientific way that a lot of time things can happen and things can be achieved, just that we don't trust the law of nature, okay? And then lastly, to achieve success, right? This last step that he mentioned is that let go of attachment without stopping the action, which I think is so important, especially um, a lot of time when we set the goal, right, we are like too attached to the 
goal title itself. Okay, but until the the until there's certain moment that we forgot that we supposed to continue with the action and whatever we supposed to do. Okay, so <clears throat> in the book it mentioned and it reminds us our persistent actions right should start from our attitude and not from our attachment to the goal. It's a bit deep lah, but I'm not sure whether you guys can catch it or not. But I, after I read it several times, I, I think I'm able to like digest. What you're trying to say is like, it's not so, not, okay. The first step is it asks you to set the goal, right? But now the final step is like contradict to the first step. How come now you say don't attach to your goal? It's because the moment you are too attached to your goal and then you forgot the rest of the force and the formula that you're supposed to put in to make it happen, right? Then it defeat the whole purpose. So this is what this step is trying to tell us. Okay, a persistent action is actually from our mindset and from our attitude. If we set it right, right, doesn't matter today um, you have achieved it or not, but it's just a matter of time. If you consistently, continuously put in this action, for, of course, it will happen. Okay, and then second, determination is the approach of calm but continuous action. I also like this very much because um, determination is not something that you should just like shout it out or like show it very aggressive or, or anything. It can be very calm, very silent, but you're actually very determined to achieve whatever you want to achieve through, again, continuous action, okay? And then third is attachment creates that, that uh, desperation, okay? So that is the reason why it says, um, when we are overly attached to that goal itself, right? It only creates that desperation, which doesn't help anything. So if I say we are too attached, right? And then we have a lot of this desperation start coming out, right? It becomes a negative atmosphere and negative environment. So this is something that we don't want and we want to always be progressive and be positive, right? So number four, define the goal as something that enhance rather than complete our lives. So goal is very important, but it's not like something that you will like, if you don't achieve it, then gone already. No. Treat it as something that it enhances uh, rather than without it, then our life is gone. No. Okay. So <clears throat> have to set that very clear and uh, let go of negative and see value in process. Okay. So even this book, uh, it also asks us to focus on the process. Okay, I think we often heard this, uh, this uh, advice from a lot of uh, our very high achieving leaders, our diamond and so on, our mentor, okay? They often ask us like, focus on the process, focus on your daily action, then eventually um, it will happen, right? So that is very true, especially if let's say we are very driven to the, the process, uh, very focused on the process instead of like attached to the goal, right? So <clears throat> here I just add in myself, uh, the bracket, be loyal to the process. Uh. As long as we are able to be loyal to the process, right? The result is almost certain uh, if, we, if we interpret from this quantum success whereby it's a physics, it's a scientific thing, okay? So lastly, I end my sharing with this quote, let go of expectation, let go of your attachment to the outcomes, but be focused 